minutes. There's a link to the minutes on the blog and it will also have a YouTube link. Okay, when you go search on YouTube, you won't be able to find it if you search it. It's called Hidden, and the only way you can access it is just to go by the link. So it's not that big of a deal. Just look at your email, click on the link. You can see the meeting, and you can also see the slideshow. That probably will be in a separate, um, separate location in case it doesn't run quite right. So anyway, um, so that information is just for us, and um, that's all I really have. So um, great to see everybody. Paula, if you subscribe, do you still need to have the link? Uh, probably so, because they are, um, they're going to be hidden. I need to double check on that, but probably so. The thing is, if you make it private, everyone will have to have a YouTube account, and we don't assume that everyone does. So there's, you know, just like everything, it's, it's set up for our own security. So we will test that out, but mostly just go by the link and that way you don't have to have a YouTube account or sign on or anything. You just look at the link. So, um, as far as I know right now, that's uh, what you can. So I'll check the subscriber and see, answer that question. So, okay. Thank anyway. you. Okay. I'm going to admit to my first screw up of the morning. I forgot to start recording at the beginning of the meeting. <gasps> Eighty. <laughs> Sorry, we're it's recording. okay. We're <laughs> I am taking minutes. <laughs> but, um, we can we'll leave the sewing studio video up on the on our YouTube channel, and also, of course, everything that Deborah just said and Yannick just said. I'm sorry, guys. Will be on the um, on our minutes, so you can go back and reference it. I I can only keep so many things in my head at once. That didn't make the cut this morning. I'm sorry. No worries, Edie. <laughs> we're good. <laughs> right. We're going to move on to Marge with her education report. <clears throat> Oh, unmute yourself. Okay, there we go. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Hope everybody's doing well. I just amaze. It amazes me that how we have adapted. It just makes me laugh. How you know <laughs> this is great, and we can just do this, and we don't miss a beat. I gotta tell you, great team members. Um, so my job has been very interesting because I get all these teachers and all these teachers cancel. So it's been certainly been um, fun. I guess I'm learning how to do something, but certainly not uh, following it to fruition. Um, but we obviously Tim Natar was canceled and Amy Friend, who was supposed to be in August, will not travel, of course. And that's going to be um, canceled, unfortunately, physically here. However, um, we all know that um, QuiltCon is going virtual in February, so I'm sure it's um, getting all these teachers to be able to create virtual classes. So we've had one started already where a teacher has sent to our guild, Sherry Lynn Woods, who has sent a, a virtual class agenda and she's got the price down and, and all the information. So we have been talking as a board saying that maybe this is a direction we're going to go. So we also have some things going on by August that will be definitely a virtual class that um, something kind of like Red, Red Thread Studio presentation we had. So we're still going virtually, we're looking towards that way. And we also, um, I've been t talking to teachers in 2021, and so far we've got, as we've said before, we've got Jerry, um, Jackie Garrick, and then I'm also talking to um, Raina Gilman for September 2021. So the teachers, we're still doing what we're doing, and hopefully there won't be an uh, earthquake in 2021, for crying out loud, because Lord knows we've had everything else. So um, anyway, we are going to be sending um, a survey to you girls and, and gents to, um, to def determine what people would like to do as far as uh, virtual classes. Will they feel comfortable? Um, and what would a price point be that people would be willing to pay so that we can determine what kind of classes this year we can um, accommodate. So again, more to follow. And all these teachers are certainly doing, um, you know, some great things and doing the same thing with, with developing virtual classes. So um, think about, go around and look at Sherry Lynn Wood's uh, website and you can see what she's um, 
what she's looking at, and what she's doing, and then that way you can get familiar with with uh, the types of classes they're offering. And I know that Tim Natar, who we had, the class that we did have um, scheduled, she also has a virtual class that's already there for that particular um, uh, technique. So anyway, uh, more to follow and know that we are trying our darndest to get people here because it's always fun to learn new techniques. So uh, I think that's all. Edie, do you have anything else to add? Um, just that we are figuring all of this out as we go along. So just hang in there with us. Okay. Thank you, Marge. I appreciate it. Uh -huh. It's a whole new world here. Um, we're going to move on to Sue Kennard, who's going to talk to you. We have a new uh, charity initiative for the year that we're going to launch today. And she's going to tell you about that. Hey, everybody. How are you? Um, about a couple meetings ago, when we were still meeting at the sewing center, Charlene came to me, Charlene Jespertson came to me and said that she had an idea for a new project. And what it is, is baby quilts. And everyone had been telling me, oh, let's go with smaller quilts. These twin size are too big, too big, too big. So that sounded really good. Brought it to the board and I've gotten further information from Charlene. She has also agreed to be the the coordinator of this. So anyway, it's through Summit Church and it's the Waterford campus. I understand they have several campuses across town, but they have, they help support foster care program. And what they do, I'm not sure if they have encouraged their, their members to be foster parents or they're just supporting them or what, but basically it's a new program for them. It's only about six to 12 months uh, old. And um, they're helping to support these foster parents. And when Charlene talked to the pastor, he said, well, you know, we could support them with baby quilts. Uh, we're looking to do it for children between birth to uh, age three. And that sounded exciting. Don't know the numbers yet or anything like that. So that's what we want to get started. And thank you to Paula for coming up with that birth announcement. I thought it was a really cute uh, idea for the, the newsletter. Um, the church works with another group that is called Commission 127. And it's a faith-based group that supports churches to support foster care families. And I gave you most of that information in the newsletter. So what we're going to do is try to collect as many of these as we can and give them a presentation. Perhaps they'll come to our meeting if we're meeting live by them. Um, but we're looking for a deadline, uh, the first deadline of November. And that way, however many quilts we have, uh, you know, that would be, be fine. Um, if you're making quilts, can't keep them, you want to give them up, um, talk to either Charlene or myself, and we'll, um, we'll help take them off your hands if possible. Um, anyway, this sounded like, like lots of fun. We can pull out some nice bright colors and some of that fabric that maybe you haven't used for a while. I know my grandkids now are, the youngest is nine years old, so I haven't been doing baby quilts in a long time. On to other things, we're still doing the, the uh, placemats. Um, that has dwindled down over the last months and such anyway. Um, but I am still taking them to seniors first. They're using them as birthday gifts. They roll them up and they are still delivering meals. So um, that's an ongoing type of thing. They're using it for their clients. So if you've got any placemats and they're um, piling up at your house, let me know. I'll come by and pick them up. Uh, QuiltCon is virtual, so there was a group of about 10 people who signed up to be on that committee. Um, I'm going to get in touch by email with these people. The other big question is Festival of Trees. Um, Paula is part of the uh, Council of 101, but she's not on the board, and they don't know yet what they're going to do, but it may be virtual. So they probably would still love to have a quilt from us. So we'll see what, what goes with that. That's all I've got for now. Okay, thank you, Sue. Um, I know we always have questions about the dimensions of quilts when we're talking about baby quilts. I mean, you, you can certainly go online and see what a, a baby quilt is considered to be. Don't right. worry about it too much. This is a baby yeah. age three. Any size, because it's gonna new, newborn up to toddlers. So yeah, any yeah. size, just keep it small. 
Yeah, and um, don't and we don't even really have to worry about a total number because if we give them everything they need, there are lots of other outlets for baby quilts. So I'm, I know a lot of you have some in your stash. So just this is our initiative for the year. This is our big charity initiative for the year. So we'll give you a new project to work on while you're at home. Thank you, Sue. Appreciate it. If you have any questions for Sue, make sure you put them in your chat. Um, we'll try to get to them. I'm trying to watch it and talk at the same time, but I may not get to everything. <laughs> we'll follow up on it. No, no worries. Um, uh, so Deborah already did the mystery quilt update. Um, just one thing about the mystery quilt, if you haven't joined in and you still want to, you absolutely can. Mary Smart is the one that is, is running our mystery quilt. She can get you caught up and she's, I think she's sending out the new set of directions today. Yes, I see her nodding. So you'll get your new set of directions today. Okay, we're going to show some sewing room videos. Um, a little note about that. I hope that most of you, the video for the, for, from the sewing studio showed better, that you didn't have the lag in the videos we had last time. Can you give me a thumbs up or a wave if that was the case? Or did you still have lag in yours? Shoot, we, we, put, them, uh, we put them on our YouTube channel because we thought maybe that would help the problem, but it's clearly just not enough bandwidth for the amount of people. So just keep in mind, you can see all of those things directly on the YouTube channel and then they'll play for you fine. Having said that, I'm now going to play you some more lagging videos. <laughs> so let me get over to that. And... First one is from Carol Evans. Whoops, come on. Quotes from both of my grandmothers and my mother. And in here, I have a huge entertainment center that I found at an estate sale a few years ago. So we moved that in and put our dressers in a walk-in closet. But the top shelves are glass doors and hold all my fabric. The little white drawers have different widths of strips and they're all marked. Big scrap basket down below. In the drawers I keep um, fat quarters, pre-made squares and half square triangles, pinwheels, and that's all of my paperwork. And then down here we have more scraps and more papers. This shelf carries everything I take to sew days. This is a mess. These are all my projects, half done things, extra supplies, more fabric up above. And down below I have flannels and my extra sewing machine. Okay, over here, we get to my sewing machine and wall hanging I had from a block of the month. This is my cutting table and the sides fold down. I love it, it's huge if you can go to pin something. I've got my design board. I have my CD player to listen to books on CD while I sew. Then over here is the big uh, ironing board that I love. I use it for cutting and, of course, for ironing. All my threads are hanging on the wall. And what I love most is working at this ironing board, and I can look out the window at the pool and the trees beyond. Anyhow, this is my sewing space. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, Carol. You're very organized, much better than I am. Okay, let me do another one here. I believe this is gonna be Linda Casey's. Oh, I gotta figure this YouTube thing out. I'm, I'm sorry. Gretchen Hirsch, I am a sewer, I'm a sewer Sorry, Gretchen, blogger. we don't wanna hear from you. Let's go over here. I know I've realized I need to put these things in a queue and really I didn't do that, but uh, better late than never, I'll figure that out for next time. So Linda is right here, Linda Casey. This is Linda Casey's. This is my sewing emporium, as my husband calls it. Like a lot of you, I have turned my formal living room into a sewing space, and it's a much better use of it. 
this is my husband's corner. He says I rent space for him <laughs> in the sewing room. <laughs> you see the current project I'm working on. The quilt on the wall my great grandmother made and gave to me as a high school graduation gift. And she and my grandmother are the ones that interested me in quilting. As you can see, my stash spills over into the guest bedroom closet. I've been working on decreasing my stash by making masks for those who need it during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic time. Thank you, Carol. Uh, this is the first time that Carol's ever made a video. She did a great job for us. Thank you. Life la, oh, no, go full away. marketing for a concept. I have no idea where this stuff is coming from. <laughs> 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 okay, not you. Go away. Ay, ay, ay. Sorry. Let me just stop this for a second and figure this out. Give me one second here, guys. Sorry. And back to here. The next video is going to be from Caroline Garnier. And let me get back to you and I will share that. I know I'm not supposed to clean my room, but I can't even step in my room. So first I need to clean. <laughs> So now my swing room really starts in my kitchen because I've got this long island, which is great for quilting, cutting fabric, and now follow me to my room. So here we've got uh, at the top, it's the pattern fabric, uh, for the garment. And then I've got some knitting books, quilting books, lots of fabric in those baskets. Uh, here, the blue top is a test I've done for a designer. Next, I've got my uh, other fiber obsession, which is knitting. So all those beans are full of uh, knitting yarn. And this is my grandmother's sewing machine. And on the corner, you see my pin cushion um, collection. Some quilts, mini quilts from um, the Amish country. The first one on the left, it's the first one I made when I came in the States. This is my IKEA little roller. I put a cutting mat on top of it and it's my ironing board. On this basket, you've got a few projects waiting to be sorted out. Then on this uh, ladder, bamboo ladder, you've got some quilt to be quilted. And then this is my quilting stash. It's not huge, it's sort of organized. Now that's my cutting table. Underneath there's some more magazine and some project waiting to be done. In the corner you've got some uh, garment patterns as well. I love this view because I can see the cardinals watching me or me watching them, I don't know. This is my beloved Juki and a quilt top that I'm intending to quilt pretty soon. And I've got a few arts on the side and another IKEA roller where my uh, serger is stored and some bits and bobs, um, tools I need. So here we've got more sewing book and all the pictures I said I would one day sort out. And then some project waiting to be done. And the basket is my naughty basket where there's some garment to be repaired or thing like that. Okay, oh, and this quilt, I started it uh, making one block a day, every day of May. So by the time you're going to see this, I'm going to have 31 blocks. And this is Geraldine. 
my sort of body double. So thank you, Caroline. Thank you all of you for doing that. Um, I'm just trying to get Some out other of- other clubs I was gonna go over just to share. Okay, um, let me get back to the meeting. Okay, sorry, I apologize for my YouTube glitches. Obviously I have some work to do for next time. We're gonna move on to our programming section. So we're gonna go back to Yannick and she has a PowerPoint uh, presentation that she's gonna share with us. All right, so for those of you that don't know me, um, I am a language arts teacher or English teacher. And um, I, used to always teach my students about um, quilts and how they were used um, uh, in the Underground Railroad and, um, you know, in different ways that people could, um, you know, communicate without necessarily always using words and text. And um, I also like teaching my students about cipher codes and different types of um, codes that they can try to figure out kind of like think about you know like Green Lantern and having that little decoder ring and like substituting letters one letter for a different letter and like making up words um, so when one day I was looking for a different type of uh, cipher quilt or like a cipher pattern to share, share with my students and I came across um, this quilter her name is Yoshiko Jinzenzi um, and she made this amazing cipher quilt that I had, it had me floored. I had never seen anything like it before and hadn't even thought to incorporate that idea into a quilt. Um, so I, I call her the master of minimalist quilts because her quilts are simple but elegant and amazing. So let me show you. Um, She does these amazing quilts with um, sometimes with lots of color and then sometimes with very minimal color. And uh, she actually was a presenter at the very first Quilton, QuiltCon. And that was like my biggest heartbreak um, because I found out about QuiltCon after it happened um, and after I joined the guild and was just so sad that I didn't get to actually go to Austin and see her in person and see her quilts in person because I, that would have been like a dream of a lifetime. <laughs> Um, so you can see here, uh, she, uh, you know, definitely has um, a signature color, and that is her uh, bamboo uh, white color. And I'm, I'll get to that in a second to tell you a little bit more about that. Um, so hers, the, the quote that I first found of hers that I fell in love with, um, oh wait, sorry, these are more photos. I found another um, quilter, another guild member, her name is Elaine Schmidt, who went to QuiltCon and took these photos of her in her class um, and kind of sh uh, shared on her blog a little bit about her teaching and, um, you know, kind of how she learned so much from the class. Even with an interpreter, um, she was able to glean so much information from her um, session. <clears throat> And so this is the quote that I found when I was teaching my kids about cipher quotes or cipher codes. <laughs> and this is a um, code, uh, a cipher code where it substitutes symbols for letters. And this actually is the story. Um, it's three different stories um, called The Tale of Heike, um, An Account of My Hut, and The Pillow Book. And these are excerpts from the story. And you can see these are massive quilts. This is nine, each quilt measures 92 by 79. So you can just imagine scale wise how much of the story it gets to even tell um, just because of the, the size that she made these quilts. So Yana, um, we're getting a question. Is that two quilts or is it front yes. and back? Of, it's two quilts. Okay. It's two separate quilts. And um, down below I listed, in, um, I included that she doesn't just use cotton fabrics. She uses, um, silk, she uses nylon, she incorporates gold leaf on some of her quilts, um, and she is a fan and of natural dyeing techniques. So she does a lot of um, inventing of techniques, actually. She invented this style of dyeing, um, bam dyeing using bamboo, um, which is why you'll see lots of subtle variations of white 
in her quilt because they're all dyed with different types of bamboo, if you can imagine. Um, <clears throat> So she is most known for, she started, um, she came to quilting by accident. <laughs> she was in Canada studying flower arrangements and happened upon Amish quilters and found these Amish quilters and was like, huh, this looks interesting and started learning how to quilt from these Amish women. And then she started um, getting into dyeing fabric and then she started getting into weaving her own cloth. So she literally, when she's, um, as she was building her um, quilting techniques, she also was building her knowledge of weaving her own fabrics to make her quilts and then um, dyeing them as well. So she just like turned, you know, her life around from being a flower arranger basically into a quilter. And this has propelled her career in a totally different trajectory than she had originally started. Um, so she moved to Bali for a little while after living in Canada. Um, and that's where she really got into especially natural dyeing of fabrics. And then she also started to just figure out like how she can incorporate um, storytelling through her quilts. So you'll see that a lot of her designs um, including this photo here on the left. Many of them are very simplistic. They, they just incorporate squares or little symbols, um, but some of them actually have codes built in that tell a story, which is, you know, of course, for me as the English teacher, I absolutely adore. Um, and so here's a technique that she invented. Um, one day she was trying to come up with a, a commissioned quilt um, for a festival in Japan, and she was just struggling, 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 and um, she was just standing outside and she decided to cut off some bamboo and try boiling it and seeing what colors could be made from that. And she had this idea of just um, using the boiled bamboo, turning that into an extract and then using that to dye her fabrics. And it just kind of blew up from there. <laughs> Basically, she realized that she can turn bamboo and different types of bamboo into uh, dyeing liquids for her fabrics. And so this is like, you know, kind of the birth of her genius too, is figuring out once she realized that she liked quilting and could um, enjoy the simple, you know, minimalist Amish style of quilting too, she then just took it to the next level and began um, with this dyeing technique. And so she also incorporates um, like flowers and fruits and vegetables. So a lot of her quilts, um, will, you'll see lots of natural colors. That's, that is definitely one of her preferences is to use natural colors. And so um, a few years after I found that cipher quilt, um, I found this book. Um, this book was published in 2011. It's still some, a book that you can easily find um, on Amazon, I believe too. And what I love about this book is that she just kind of shares her development of quilt ideas. So it's not necessarily a pattern book. If you're wanting patterns, I'll, sh I'll show you a little bit more about how to get her patterns. But um, a lot of it is just like teaching you how to visualize making a quilt and incorporating negative space into that quilt so you can um, tell a story through um, <clears throat> blank spaces. And so these are just some of the quilts that she has in her books. Um, the, she has a lot of quilts using white and other colors. And that's, that's um, another signature style of hers too, is to have little bits of color incorporated in the, into the white. Uh, she did this great hexagon quilt. Um, and I don't know if you can see very well how even the edges, she didn't do straight edges. They're all hexagon edges, like all the way around. It's, it's gorgeous to see the, a better picture of this. Um, but I, I, uh, I, until I had seen this quilt, I didn't even think about the fact that you can make a quilt that didn't have a square edge. Uh, so that kind of opened my mind to different potential um, for quilting, like they don't all have to be square. <laughs> um, this, uh, these are other uh, quilts that can be found in her book. And um, she actually does teach a little bit about how to make these um, two quilts in particular. And I'll show you that in a second. And um, she, this is 
um, on the left is what she calls a baby quilt and she uh, it incorporates cipher codes as well as texture for babies she wanted it to have just um, an amazing feel and tech and touch like tactile reaction for babies so it's it's pretty small it's one of her smaller quilts um, other than like some of the pillows that she's made. So you can see, um, hopefully you can see with even with the shadowing on there that there's different designs in every single box um, and it's made for a baby. <laughs> so you can think about that as you're coming up with your baby quilt ideas for our new charity drive. Um, and then this one too, this is a photo in her home. Um, her house is amazing. If you ever get a chance to just Google and look at her home, she designed and built her own home in Japan. She lives in Kyoto, Japan right now. And it's a 4,300 square foot house where everything in the house almost she made herself. That includes the pottery, the fabric, the linens, the quilts, the art on the wall, almost everything. She is just a master of all, to be honest, not just quilting. She has mastered a lot of different um, areas of art. Um, her pottery is gorgeous. If you, if, so I definitely would recommend going and looking at her home um, and I can share the link for that information too but she's just a phenomenal woman. Um, so you can see the simplicity of the one on the right where it's just it's mostly all white it's bamboo dyed fabric with small bits of color um, and um, small bits of line going down the middle. So if you are interested in um, ever making one of her patterns. She has these great patterns where it's their standalone little kits that you can buy. Um, I believe I see, I've seen them on Amazon for you to buy. Um, she has this artist series where each of the main quilts that she is most known for that are um, hanging in museums now, um, you can actually, uh, she teaches you a little bit about the techniques for each one. Um, the one in the middle is the only one that I actually own and I am, I've only made two out of the block so far because they're quite detailed, um, even though from afar it looks like they're simple. Um, there's lots of variations of white and there's um, other colors that she suggests that you can incorporate, but it's a lot of um, piecing techniques too. So Yannick, so, is that paper pieced? That part of it is paper pieced, yes. So that's that's a big part of why it's taken me so long is trying to figure out like the best shading of colors to incorporate and make it um, not necessarily exactly like hers, but in that same um, vein. I wanted to have that same feel when you look at it from afar and up close. Um, but her other book, uh, Quilt Artistry, I put a, a copy of the cover on the left, um, incorporates a lot of her uh, Japanese style quilts and a lot of those are very simple minimal design um, heavily quilted she does a lot of machine quilting on these um, and you can see basic designs that you would see uh, all throughout Japan so a lot of their symbols a lot of their um, uh, iconography that you're pr probably very familiar with um, you can see visually represented in her quilts and um, that's, that's basically what I wanted to share for today because I really want to invite you to just learn more about her on your own kind of and be surprised the same way that I was when I first was uh, learning about her. And um, if you are interested in minimal quilting or incorporating more negative space into your quilt designs, I would highly recommend um, looking into her more because uh, she really um, shows you what can be possible even with just white fabric. <laughs> so um, if, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll be happy to answer what I can. There was um, a question that just came in about the baby quilt. Is the texture more from the piecing or was it from the quilting? That is actually more from the quilting the, on the baby quilt. And she even incorporates like, um, I can go back, let me show you the the, the one other piece that I love, the, the border is like this rickrack uh, soft, like Nice. Yeah. Makes the baby want to play with it fabric. <laughs> yeah. So she's um, she's amazing, and um, I, I definitely think if you start just researching her, you'll 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 probably fall in love with a lot of her quotes as well. Yana, can you go back to that first book that you showed? Sure. So just um, the first one. Yes, I think uh, Caroline just said that she saw that this is available through the Orange County Library system, but I'm thinking Aradria this might be a good addition to our library as well. I would love to see this. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So you can let me know if that's something that we can do. 
Leonic, that's so great. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, and I, I'll, I'll send um, Paula all of the links and everything that I um, used to make this presentation so that you can see her home, um, more of her quilts, and just, you know, be, hopefully be in, as in awe as I was with her. That was beautiful. So thank you for listening. Beautiful. Hey, Deborah, do you want to talk a little bit about what you're planning for this block of programming? Hi, yeah, thanks so much, Edie. Um, so this is the first in a series of three um, programming sessions that we're going to talk about um, a, an aspect of Japanese design or quilting. Um, even though Yoshiko Jinzenji has a lot of, she's known for her quilting, there's a lot of other design methods that she uses. And next month, I'm going to do a presentation um, on a design method that the Japanese use called, um, why did my mind just go blank? Um, Notan, N-O-T-A-N, the Japanese art of design. So this, I'm presenting that next month. And then we have another presentation in August um, on Japanese, something to do with Japanese quilting. If you have a subject matter that you may not even be an expert in, but you feel like you want to just have a chat about maybe Japanese fabric or, or um, a specific stitch, and you would like to host a September meeting, please get in touch with me. Um, if I don't get a, a person to fill in the, for the September meeting, we have some other plans, but it'll be the end of our Japanese session. So if you're interested, please contact me um, soon. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Deborah. Um, I, and if you're, you, if you can look at the chats quickly, you might enjoy that. There's some nice comments coming in. Um, I think I tried to get to all the questions for the presenters. Um, next is our virtual show and tell. Uh, thank you, Paula, once again for just doing great work for us with all these things. Um, she, I can't tell you how hard she's been working on all these things. So I'm going to show that now. Edie. All right, play.
Wow, <clears throat> that was impressive. That was very impressive. <clears throat> Thank you so much for sending all those in. Continue to do that. Everybody's been working hard. Oh shoot, hang on, sorry. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> my, my fault. <laughs> I'll figure that out before next time, I promise. <laughs> Uh, Deborah, did you have anything else you wanted to say before we wrap up? Paula, anybody? I, if, if anybody else says, maybe we could open it up to um, volunteers or quick questions either in the chat room or um, unmute yourself. Does anybody have a question or something they want to share? Kind of wave your hand. <coughs> I can't see all of you, but um, Sue? Okay, there was a question about the masks and such, and I figured Either you're still making them and going crazy with them or you've, you're done. But when everything is done, uh, I don't know when this is gonna be over, but we'd like to have an idea of how many masks everybody's been doing and where you've been donating them to. So seeing the pictures of the embroidered ones, those are just really clever, Judy, really, really nice. But it, when we're all done, we'd like to take some, you know, get some numbers on that. So keep track of how many you're making. Okay, thank you, Sue. Um, I see there's a question from Dawn. Okay, Paula sent you an email about the newsletter from Dawn, our new member. Um, some of you may not have been on yet. We have a new member who has joined us when, while we are completely virtual. Her name is Dawn Vanderwolf. So everybody say hi to Dawn. Hi, Dawn. Very happy to have you with us. Um, we're all getting up to speed on this. So I hope you have a little hang in there with us while we learn all these new things. I think that's Edie, all. Yes. I have all. one more thing. Edie, I just wanted to say you all got the newsletter and um, we have reformatted it just a tiny bit, but I just wanted to thank Aradria. She's amazing with the graphics. Um, I can pull all the type together, but she makes those cute little graphics and they're so nice. So everybody has their own little like logo now for their meeting area and everything. So thanks Aradria. She's, she is really um, amazing at that. So. I yeah, just wanted you. to say that, so a little mentioned. shout out. Yeah, fantastic. Anybody else? Don't think so. Okay, so next month obviously we'll be virtual again as we will in August. Um, after that, we're gonna take it month by month, but it probably will be virtual for a little while after that as well. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a frog in my throat. In the meantime, please take care of yourselves, stay safe and well, and I, I do wanna send an extra little thought out into the world with you. I think we've all been dazzled over and over again by the compassion and generosity of this group. And I hope that you will carry <clears throat> all that love and kindness with you out into the world. We certainly need it now more than ever. So just, just keep doing all you do and I will see you next month. Love you all. Bye-bye.